Hello everyone and welcome on the Papier de Rêve channel. I'm Ursula and today I will be painting with you some artichokes flowers. Last year I've painted them uh, on a really big piece of paper and if uh, you follow me on Instagram maybe you have seen it already uh, but I never painted uh, on uh, my YouTube channel so that's uh, what I want to, to do uh, for this week's video. If you want to see uh, my reference picture or uh, the previous painting mm -hmm. I've made of uh, this uh, flower, you can uh, check my blog. Uh, there, there is a link uh, to it uh, in the description just below the video. Uh, and I will put uh, the reference image and uh, the, some pictures of my first uh, attempt. I've started this painting with uh, a wet paper uh, and then I uh, infused some indigo uh, color uh, at the top and a mix of Indentrain Blue and Nickel as a Yellow at the bottom. Uh, I want uh, for this painting to have a dark background uh, with a light flower that will uh, really contrast with the dark background. As my background is already dark with uh, indigo, I just wanted to place uh, my uh, flowers with uh, infusing some uh, lavender color into it. As it's an uh, opaque color, it will push a little bit the darker, the darker colors away. Uh, and you can see uh, the flower appears a little bit, but right now everything is really, really uh, blurry and uh, there is no definition to it, but that's just what I want for a first layer in a watercolor. And before letting this uh, first layer dry, I'm adding a little bit more indigo uh, in the bottom. I've also added a little bit of sodalite genuine in order to have some texture in, uh, in, uh, this, uh, in the bottom of uh, this, this painting. Uh, but I wanted something a little bit darker, so I add a little bit of indigo. With this uh, first layer totally dry, I want to uh, work my flowers and I want to work them uh, with a negative uh, painting technique uh, just because they are a bit lighter on the darker background and it's easy uh, to, to paint them with a negative uh, painting technique. So I'm painting around the flower uh, and I'm making uh, the, uh, all the petal appears and for that I'm painting the shape a little bit roughly and then I will add uh, some tiny lines uh, that are going from the darker color to the heart of the flowers uh, in order to make all this uh, lighter line appear. As I'm adding a lot of darker color uh, around the flower, I want to push this uh, color in all the background. So I'm uh, adding a lot of water in order to uh, make the color flow uh, into the, the rest of the background. Uh, and I will try to blend it uh, with the background so that there is no sharp edges uh, where you can see the end of uh, the second layer of dark color. I like to paint uh, this kind of details upside down just because uh, it's a little bit easier to make fine lines uh, in this direction for me, uh, but the rest of the painting will be uh, in the right uh, uh, side up. Now that the top of my flower is uh, fairly detailed, I need to work on uh, the bottom part uh, of the flower. Uh, this bottom part is made of leaves. Uh, it's the part that we eat uh, when you eat artichokes. And it's uh, quite a, a nice texture to paint. There's a lot of uh, tiny details that you can make. But as my paper is fairly uh, wet in this area, uh, the color I'm adding right now is uh, blending into the background. And that's just okay. Uh, I want it to be quite soft for now. Uh, it will always be uh, possible to add some uh, details and some uh, sharper details uh, later. And my paper is really uh, not wet uh, everywhere. There is part that is wet and uh, other parts are really dry and that's uh, quite interesting right now uh, because some areas uh, will bleed in one another 
and some not so i will have uh, quite uh, a nice uh, mix of hard edges and soft edges that are forming quite naturally on my paper and it helps to uh, get this natural effect that i want uh, in this painting i'm starting to add some details in uh, the flower i'm adding uh, some touches of uh, quinacridone burnt scarlet into it uh, so that you can have a first idea of all the leaves that compose uh, these uh, shapes uh, but as i do not want to uh, have this quinacridone bird scarlet in just one part of my painting i'm adding it uh, also at the bottom uh, it will uh, appear like a, a soil or something like that it's always good to have uh, some colors that are repeating uh, itself uh, throughout uh, the painting. Uh, it's uh, like uh, a choir that uh, sings uh, the same uh, melody uh, but at different times. As the bottom of my painting is fairly wet right now, I just wanted to add some darker color into it uh, in order to make the flower pop a little bit more. I need to have some darker colors around it. Uh, so that's what I'm doing by adding another layer of indigo uh, in some areas. And while the flowers are still uh, wet, but not so wet, uh, I can uh, add some colors into it and the color will stay fairly in place. Uh, so I'm adding a darker green uh, just uh, around the edge of uh, the petals so that we can have an idea of uh, a shadow, for example. And I will add another layer of petals into it with a darker violet. For this mix of violet, I'm using uh, Indian Trend Blue and Rose Mother Lake. And sometimes I'm adding a little bit more of Rose Mother Lake in order to uh, make this flower pop a little bit more because it's the only part of this painting where uh, there is this uh, Rose Mother Lake. I'm working this part of the flower a bit like uh, um, the, the beginning of this second layer by adding a lot of uh, little strokes into it. And I will let this layer dry totally and we'll, uh, I will talk you through my supplies. For the brushes, I'm using an Escoda Ultimo number 18 and a Raphael Petitgris 903 number 12. For the colors, I'm using Indian Trend Blue. Nickel Azo Yellow, Rose Mother Lake, Quenacridon Burn Scarlet, Lavender, Indigo, and Sodalite Genuine. And my paper today is from uh, Canson Heritage in Hot Pressed. Right now, everything is a little bit messy, uh, but that's what I want because fall for me is a little bit messy too. Uh, so it adds to the atmosphere and I, I quite like it. But I need to add some uh, details in order uh, for you to understand a little bit better uh, this painting. And I starting this by adding details in uh, the shape of uh, the artichoke flower. I'm adding this uh, darker leaves into it so that uh, you can see a little bit better that it's an artichoke. And uh, for that, I'm painting a dark uh, green colors uh, in the shape. And then I will add a little bit of color in order to uh, make a gradient and uh, blur these uh, shapes uh, into uh, the rest of the flower. And I'm adding also uh, a little bit more details uh, and uh, elements uh, into the foliage uh, because right now it's a little bit too blurry uh, and I need a little bit more depth into it and uh, some sign of abundance of foliage right now. And for the foliage, I'm just using the, the shape of my brush in order to uh, make some marks on my paper. And I will blur some area uh, in order to have also this contrast of uh, soft edges and sharp edges into uh, the foliage. And this video is now ending. Thanks for watching and I hope you like it. Uh, please check the blog post for more information about it and tell me what you think in the comments. See you soon.